Morning, First Love family. So glad to be here with you guys. You have no idea. Um, this morning, we're going to be looking at the book, book of Hebrews in chapter 3, starting in verse 12. This is good stuff, man. It goes like this. <clears throat> Take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. Wow, okay, there you go. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. While it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they proved, provoked me. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoke me. For who provoked him when they had heard indeed? Did not all those who come out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that he would not enter his rest? They would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. So when we go back here to the beginning of this passage, um, take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. What is this except that, and we talked about it yesterday in, 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 in Sunday service um, with Revelation chapter 2, when, when Jesus said, hey, man, you know, you're doing everything right, but you've left your first love. I, I, you need to return to your first love because otherwise I'm going to take your lampstand out of its place. Putting us in a position where we are no longer where Jesus is and Jesus is no longer where we are. You all heard that yesterday. Not good. Scary, actually. Um, fear of the Lord for me is not being where Jesus is or him not being where I am. So it says... Take care, brethren, that there not be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart that falls away from the living God. What he's saying here is if you become infected, and that's what it is, it's an infection of sin, if you become infected with an unbelieving heart, then you become evil. See, to God, good and evil are, are very clear and easily distinguished between one another. If you're living a sacrificial life, obedient to God, then you are good. If you're living a life that says, no, I, you know, I, got, uh, I got another life going on. I don't need to follow Jesus. I don't need to be obedient. I know I was, and that was cool for a minute, but you know, I, I, it kind of wore off. Jesus kind of wore off. I have people tell me that all the time. They're into something else now. Some other uh, spiritual counterfeit. Jesus wore off. I'm like, no, Jesus didn't wear off. You wore off. You stopped. You quit. See, because God will never put you in a position to look at his word or look at him through the eyes that the Holy Spirit gives you and have you say or have you believe, no, I no longer believe in Jesus. I no longer believe. That is you allowing the spirit of the Antichrist to command your heart. Plain and simple. No other way to explain it. No other way that it can happen. You have allowed the spirit of the Antichrist to infect you with this counterfeit lies. Because it says right here in verse 13, but encourage one another day after day. Maybe you have fallen out of love with God because you fell out of love with his people. Maybe you've fallen out of love with God because you no longer are in fellowship with a right-minded, like-minded family of God. I talked yesterday a lot about illicit sex. And this is what I see commonly after 25 years of pastoring, standing up on that pulpit. Um, she comes in, he sees her, she's not saved or she's brand new, and they kick off a relationship. 
And before too long, um, because she's not saved, she's like, I don't, I don't want to go to church today. Let's go to the beach. Let's take a drive. To the, let's go out to the desert. Let's go to Vegas. Okay, what's one day? What's one? What's? And then pretty soon it's two days. Pretty soon it's four days. And then you find that you haven't been to church for a month. And then you find that you haven't read your Bible for a few weeks. And the counterfeit of the devil, disguised as a beautiful woman or a handsome man, if you're a girl, has robbed you of the encouragement that you need to survive in the Christian world. But encourage one another day after day as long as it is still called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Sin will harden your heart and soften your resolve. It hardens your heart and it softens your resolve. You compromise. You become a compromiser. Oh, well, you know... The heart wants what the heart wants. No. The heart was created by God. And yes, Jeremiah says, the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? But that's the unbelieving heart. The believing heart is full of nothing but love and adoration for God. But you have to make the decision whether you're going to be that believing heart or whether you're going to be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Because it says in verse 14, for we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast from the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. Hold fast. If I fall off a boat in the middle of the ocean and somebody throws me a rope, my grip on that rope is going to be so tenacious that nothing can rip it out of my hand. Because I'm in the middle of the ocean and I'm surely going to drown if I lose hold of that rope. Encourage one another day after day so long as it is called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance. See, what, what was the beginning of our assurance like? The beginning of our assurance was all about Jesus, man. Jesus this, Jesus that. Oh, shut up about Jesus. Can't do it. Got to talk about Jesus. But then you meet that girl and she's like, can we talk about something else, dog? And you're like, oh, okay. And Jesus slowly comes up less and less and less. Do not be joined together with an unbeliever. <laughs> Simple as that, right? And I know I'm getting off topic a little bit, but, but he says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. When did they provoke him? What he's talking about is when Moses sent in 12 spies and only two of them came back with a positive report, Joshua and Caleb, and the rest of them were scared to take up the promises of God. And so they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness, and during that time they backslid, they idolized, and still he took care of them. But he said, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. They provoked him because they didn't believe, they didn't follow, they didn't, they didn't do what he said that they could do by his power. For who provoked him when they said they had heard, indeed, did not all of those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Well, this is what's amazing to me, is they saw all the miracles that Moses laid on Pharaoh to get them free, and not long after they were out of Egypt, they were murmuring and complaining And because of that, so many thousands of them fell in the wilderness, and that whole generation was withheld from coming into the promised land. And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were not able to enter in because of unbelief. Okay, so where does that leave you and me? Unbelief is the enemy. And unbelief can worm its way in through false doctrine, through phony teaching, through unhealthy relationships. 
And so when it says here, encourage one another day by day as long as it is still called today so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. There's an insurance policy in that verse. Anyway, out of time. Love you very much. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, Lord, these things that you say to us seem so simple. And yet, we do harden our hearts. Prevent that from happening to these people who I'm speaking to today. To First Love Church. Lord, cause us to be flexible and teachable and loving and full of the joy of our salvation. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow, family. God bless. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.